These are more of the dumbest ways people have died. Number 10. Aerial Mario Kart Most of us probably already know about this story, so I'll make it a quick one. Aeschylus was a famous ancient Greek playwright known for his tragedies, but little did he know he himself was going to star in a real-life tragedy. According to legend, an eagle mistook his bald head for a rock and dropped a tortoise on it, killing him instantly. You see, eagles are known to drop tortoises on rocks to break their shells, but here's where I get skeptical, because birds are supposed to have the best vision on the planet, unlike Asians, so how was this bird not able to determine if his head was a rock or not? I don't know, maybe he was a Stevie Wonder copycat or the eagle had a blue shell and Aeschylus was in first place. Number 9. A deadly Alarm Clock Samuel Wardell was a lamplighter in New York in 1886 who invented a makeshift alarm clock. He did this by wiring a clock to a shelf with a 10 pound rock on top of it which was designed to wake him up once it hit the floor. But what he didn't know is that it was going to do the exact opposite of what it was designed to do because it would be the exact thing that would send him to sleep forever. One Christmas night our good friend Sam had a little too much to drink. And after demonstrating his invention to guest, he reset it incorrectly. And in the next morning, he woke up to the delight of the stone laying right on his face. And that, of course, was a joke, because he didn't get to wake up at all. Maybe it was for the better if all you could do for the rest of your life was Why? light lamps. Number 8. Judge, Jury, and Executioner of Himself Diodorus Sicilis was a Greek historian who recorded the history of the world up to his time. And in one of his stories, there was a Greek lawgiver from Sicily that issued a law that anyone who brought weapons into the assembly must be put to death. But one day, he ran into the assembly asking for help to defeat some brigands in the countryside. But he didn't realize he still had a knife attached to his belt. Realizing this, he unsheathed the knife and stabbed himself. That is a new level of commitment. He could go into a room of the hottest women alive no. at the time and be like, No thanks, ladies. I have a wife. But I could only imagine what the people in the assembly did after that. So, should we help him still, or... Number 7. Too nice to use the restroom. Tycho Brahe, a renowned Danish astronomer, attended a banquet in Prague, organized by Peter Vach, the Count of Rosenberg. But during the meal, Brahe realized he needed to go to the bathroom bad, but he didn't want to make his host upset, since it was considered impolite to leave the table before royalty. I like to imagine it was planned though, like the royal family all went to the bathroom before the party and just sat still knowing this guy had a bladder problem and wanted to see how far he would go. Anyway, after he was allowed to leave the banquet, he tried to go to the bathroom and realized something absolutely horrifying. He just couldn't go at all because he had a kidney stone which ruptured his bladder several days later. The funniest thing to me though is that he was too nice to go to the bathroom in the middle of a party but he wasn't nice enough not to duel someone, where he lost part of his nose in a duel and replaced it with a metal one, and he was smart enough to be an astronomer, but he wasn't smart enough to fix his moral compass. Number 6. What the hell was that thing made of? A prominent French composer and musician in the 17th century, Jean-Baptiste de Lully was so good he even played for King Louis the 14th of France. But during one of his masterclass performances while he was conducting, he accidentally struck his foot with his conducting staff, where the injury led to an infection and gangrene set in. Despite medical advice to amputate the foot, Loli refused and died from the infection. Imagine working your whole life to be the best musician in the world and you start performing big shows and even get hired by the king and then you die like this. And this is where the title comes in because what was that damn stick made of anyway? Lead, tungsten, vibranium? If I had a baseball bat made of what that stick was made of, I would be hitting 450 dead center every time. Number 5. When two pilots shaboink in the air. This story involves two pilots that didn't know when to keep their hands to themselves because while flying a plane they had the idea of putting that thing on autopilot, where one pilot got ready to land his plane into another pilot's cabin, and you can only guess what happened next. Witnesses reported seeing the aircraft's right wing fail in a dive. It was later revealed that the pilot and co-pilot were engaged in sexual activity, leaving the plane unmanned. Luckily, there were only the two of them in the plane and no one else was injured, but the people I truly feel bad for are the hey, ones guy. that found their bodies. Number 4. The Failed Sequel of Up Padre Adilir Antonio de Carle, known as Padre Balunero, was a Brazilian Catholic priest who attempted to fly using a cluster of helium balloons in an attempt to raise funds for a spiritual rest stop for truckers. Unfortunately, he went missing over the Atlantic on April 20th, 2008. Despite his GPS and other equipment, he lost contact and his body was found months later. 
And honestly, it was a good cause, but awful execution. Why couldn't he just do a normal fundraiser like a 10 mile long hike or a lemonade stand, just like a normal person? On the bright side though, he was able to meet God earlier. Though it may be way earlier than he expected. Number 3. Gary Hoy was a Toronto lawyer who died tragically in 1993 while demonstrating the strength of his own office building's windows to a group of students. He threw himself against the window on the 24th floor, causing him to fall to his death. But here's the thing, he did this stunt many times before and every time he would bounce off the glass and be totally fine, but I guess he did it so many times that it just couldn't withstand it anymore. But at least he did succeed in proving how strong the glass was, because the glass didn't break, it was the frame that failed. Him. But he didn't just die, his business did too, because his death contributed to the closing of Holden Day Wilson in 1996, which was the largest law firm closure in Canada. Imagine sacrificing all the work you did and others did just to get a slight ego boost from students that were practically obligated to cheer and applaud you. Number 2. Jet Skiing Over Niagara Falls I didn't have a silly title for this one because it is already mind-bogglingly stupid. Robert Overraker attempted to raise awareness about homelessness by jet skiing over Niagara Falls in 1995. I swear, some people just find a heartwarming topic so that they can do the dumbest known to man and still be remembered as a good person if they die. But jokes on you guys, I'm not falling for it. His master plan was to attach a rocket booster on a jet ski and a parachute to make the stunt successful. Who does- sorry, who did this guy think he is? Vin Diesel? I mean, at least he did his own stunts like Tom Cruise, except the only difference is that one of them is still alive. In the performance, he forgot to secure the parachute to himself and it detached when he went over the falls, leading to his death. Man, if only that darn parachute didn't fall off, we would still have a kind-hearted genius walking among us. Look, even though it is unlikely, if anyone that is related to this guy is watching, I am not sorry. Be mad that he loved the homeless cartoon ideas in Niagara Falls more than you. Number 1. Stallion Static. Some of you may know about the story, but it is just so stupid and disgusting I had to put it at the number one spot. Kenneth Pinion, also known as the subject of the documentary Zoo, thought, why would I fantasize over Megan the Stallion when I could just do it with a real one? And so he did. And after the coitus with the poor horse, he suffered a perforated colon, which led to peritonitis, causing his death in 2005. Look, I don't blame the horse because this guy looks like an animal, not like a horse or anything, more like an abused blobfish, so I can only guess the horse got so confused that he decided to shablink anyway. And the saddest thing about this is that he had a wife and children, so he decided that a male horse was better looking and more worth it than his family. I don't know who to feel more bad for though, because on one hand, the kids probably got bullied like, haha, your dad died to a horse long, and on the other hand, the wife had to question if she was prettier than a horse or not. Oh my gosh, Animator Me is gonna have such a problem making this family friendly. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed hearing me talk about some more of the dumbest ways people have died. And if you haven't watched the first one, please do, Poppy. I would like to thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you in another episode.